Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. In 2019, I set a pretty ambitious goal, and that was to read 52 books, one for every week of the year. In the past, I've made the largest leaps in personal growth and understanding through intensive reading. Whether it's performance in data science, in sports, in love, any aspect of my life, you name it, books have been one of the ways that I've changed my perspective on the world. And they've really helped me to understand my situation, understand how other people think, etc. In this video, I talk a little bit about the nine books that really had the largest impact on my perspective in 2019. These are the books that pressured me to grow just that little bit more throughout the course of this year. If you're interested in reading them, they're all linked in the description below. I've also linked all 52 of the books that I read this year if you're interested in my reading list or anything like that. I will say I read pretty much only nonfiction. I learn, read a lot about human behavior, about, um, again, about personal growth, and that is the type of content that you will find down there. You know, so before I get into this list, I want to talk a little bit about what reading means to me. Growing up in middle school and high school, I was always way behind the curve in reading. I think in seventh grade, I was reading at like a fourth grade level. And throughout high school, I, I never really caught up. I got most of my coursework done by looking at Spark Notes. I don't actually think I ever really finished one of the assigned books that we were to read. Now, this is now looking back very sad. I missed out on a lot of really interesting reading. and. I've kind of tried to go back through that reading list over time and, and check off a lot of the, the classics that I missed out on. But it wasn't until college that, that I found how valuable books could be. When I was learning how to improve my golf game, when I was learning statistics, any of these things, I turned to books and I found that a lot of the answers to the questions that I was asking were within those pages. I could learn from people who had a lot of experience in the field um, that I was interested in learning about. Now, it wasn't until after college, where when I was studying for the, for the GMAT to go to grad school, that my reading journey transformed a little bit. I was trying to read faster, the, the GMAT is a time test, and I came across a free online uh, speed reading course. So I took it and honestly, it, it transformed the way that I consume information. I'd like to share this course with you. It's just at readspeeder.com. Not sponsored to say this, it's perfectly free. I think you just need like an email. Uh, and that's something that absolutely flipped my world upside down uh, from a learning perspective. So if you're interested in, in, in improving in that area and in, in being able to read you know, more books more quickly, I would definitely check that out. Obviously now reading is a huge part of my life. I've learned pretty much all of the information I know about data science, about sports, about sports analytics, about life in general from books. And I'd like to share the ones now that were the most impactful to me this year. So coming in at number nine on my list is a book by David Goggins called Can't Hurt Me. You might have seen David Goggins on YouTube or on Instagram. He makes mostly motivational videos where it just yells at you for a couple minutes. And honestly, this book got me really fired up. It made me ready to run through a wall because in it, David talks about how his experiences, how his rough childhood, how he was able to get through all of these things with his the power of his own mind. The thesis here is that if you do things constantly that you don't wanna do, let's say I go for a run every day, even though I'm not a huge fan of running, that is what builds strength of will. That's what builds a strong mind. And I've really taken to that. You know, there are a lot of things that I don't do because that I know are good for me, uh, but I just really don't genuinely like doing them. And the more I actually buckle down and do those things, the easier they become. And so, I, you know, this year, aside from my knee injury, I'm planning to run a marathon. That's something that I never thought in my wildest dreams I would do. And honestly, the feeling of overcoming something and doing something that you never thought you would do is very, very empowering. Coming in at number eight 
on this list is a book called To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. Now, this book really changed the way that I view soft skills. I know that soft skills are important and I've never been able to really explain them well. You know, it's like, oh, you just have to be good with people. Uh, Daniel Pink, he explains that the world is becoming about selling. Even if you're not in a sales profession, the work you do is very likely sales oriented. And sales isn't what you think of as, you know, like a used car salesman trying to get you to buy a clunker. It's actually just a way of conveying value, your value and information to another person. So whenever you have an interaction, a lot of it is how you can create value for them and how you they can create value for you. You know, whether it's just meeting with a friend, you're creating value because you enjoy spending time with each other, you share common things. And, you know, as, as you know, weird as it sounds, that that is somewhat of a transaction. And shaping the, the world that way, shaping your interactions that way is something that I really think can help you bond with other people and interact with other people more effectively. The seventh book on my list is The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Now this is kind of gospel for a lot of people that are um, trying to get out of the nine to five rigorous lifestyle. Um, and it's also spawned a lot of kind of, I think, junk uh, online businesses. But to me, this really showed me that you never know what you will get if you ask for it. One of the big things that Tim talks about is if you do good work, it's possible to really work from anywhere. You know, if my skill set is, is, is very valuable to a company and I ask to work remote, if they don't let me work remote, there's a chance that I leave. So there's actually a reasonable chance that they'll actually let me get away from these things. And if I automate a lot of the things that maybe I don't want to do or that are kind of a waste of my time, I can maximize my value to an organization, to my family, to any of these things. So I really enjoy this book because it's all about time management and really focusing on the things that you want to do and the things that you're good at. So I would recommend this to anyone that kind of wants a, a mix up, a shake up of the kind of traditional lifestyle, um, because this is a good call to action for that. Coming in number six on my list is a book called Deep Work by Cal Newport. Now, this book shows you that really producing great work and getting into this you know flow state where work comes very easily, it's actually a uh, accumulated skill. It's something that you learn. It's not something that you're born with like a trait. Now this was a fairly novel concept to me. I've always, it's been kind of elusive when I can get into this flow state, when I can really produce my best work. And through his book, I've been able to systemize that. So I can actually kind of sit down, buckle down and really get to good work quicker than I ever have before. So coming in number five on my list is a book called The Personalized Diet. Now, this book was written by Aaron Segal and Aaron Elinov out of the Weissman Institute, which is a very reputable uh, research institute in Europe. Now, they've focused on debunking a lot of the myths around diet, you know, that either high fat, low carb is really good, low fat, high carb, but there's all these different diets that are out there. And what they found is through studying the microbiome, which is like the bacteria in our stomach, that each individual person has a unique reaction to food. So I might be able to eat bread, for example, and my body reaction because of my microbiome might be very different than one of my friends. So for me to eat bread, it might be perfectly fine. And for them to eat bread, it might, you know, cause a lot of health issues for them. And this was absolutely fascinating to me. It made me look at food very different. It made me experiment a lot more with food. So one of the things that the book recommends is that you eat and you see how you feel. Or you eat and you're, you test your, your blood glucose after each meal. So I've really spent a lot of time figuring out and testing what foods work for me for peak performance. And, and I found that even some of the things that I thought were bad for me really didn't um, create any negative effects. So I've been able to eat um, 
in theory healthier as well as better in terms of the foods that I enjoy. Coming in at number four on my list is a book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Now, Matthew Walker is one of the, the best known sleep researchers in the world, and this book kind of flipped my world upside down. It showed me the true importance of, of sleep in health, in being a functioning and efficient human being, in memory and all of these things. You know, there's a lot of different, um, you know, ailments that are tied to poor sleep that I didn't even know about. And I'd like to read just a quick excerpt here because I thought that this was, this was fascinating. So scientists have discovered a revolutionary new treatment that makes you live longer. It enhances your memory and makes you more creative. It makes you look more attractive. It keeps you slim and lowers food cravings. It protects you from cancer and dementia. It wards off colds and the flu. It lowers your risks of heart attack and stroke not to mention diabetes. You'd, you'll feel even happier, less depressed, less anxious, are you interested? And those are all benefits of getting a better night's sleep, getting a full eight hours of sleep, getting actual restful sleep. So I've taken a lot of steps to actually improve my sleep quality from this book in general. So coming in number three on this list is a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. So. To be perfectly honest, I have a very average willpower, but once I create a habit, it's very easy for me to stick to it once it's been ingrained. And habits are the way that I get around this, you know, average willpower is because I just kind of program myself to be able to, you know, do certain activities. Whether it's, you know, when I wake up, I do my little exercise routine and I get straight to work, or whether it's how I eat or sleep, anything like that. So in this book, Atomic Habits, James really focuses on how you develop good habits. And you develop them by starting at like the kernel of what a good habit is. If you're trying to start exercising, the kernel of that is, for example, doing a single push-up a day. A push-up a day is something that you should be able to do every day. You know, it takes very little time, it takes very little strength. And if you do that repeatedly, you'll ingrain that habit. And once you've ingrained that habit, say you do push-ups for 40 days in a row, just one push-up, you can start building on it. And the hardest part is actually ingraining that habit. The building on it part is very easy. So I think that this methodology is fascinating and I've used it in a lot of different ways. You know, ways, uh, I, I've started a good study program for learning data science using this. I started a great exercise program related to this. Um, this is a you know, very straightforward and, and obvious concept, but it is absolutely transformational in my opinion. So coming in at number two on this list is a book called The Four Disciplines of Execution. And frankly, this book just showed me how to get things done. It generally focuses on team execution, but I use the same structure to run my individual life. The four disciplines are to one, set wildly important goals, two, to understand lead and lag metrics. And I have a bit more breakdown of this in a video uh, that's listed above. Uh, the third is to keep score. And the fourth is to find a way to hold yourself accountable. Now I've significantly increased my quantity and quality of output, whether that's for my data science work to the YouTube videos that I produce with this technique. And I have developed my own personal scorecard to hold myself accountable. Uh, as well. And you know, that is also in that same video that I described above. You know, this has been a great way to measure myself to make sure that I'm improving. And I really believe that the concepts in this book, this book truly work. So coming in at number one on this list, the book actually has a fairly fitting name. It's called The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay, I believe it's Papasan. Um, you know, this book produced my largest aha moment of 2019. I've always been interested in pursuing multiple projects, multiple ideas, um, and multiple, you know, different avenues. And these things really pulled my attention in different ways. Uh, the one thing, it shows you the power of really focusing linearly on one big picture goal. Um, my focus this in 2019 towards the end was to really focus on producing good and useful YouTube content 
And I believe that, that I've made leaps and bounds that I never would have if I was still trying to focus on three or four of the other projects that I have going on. Um, you know, thank you all for sticking with me through this video or, or through this journey so far. I've really enjoyed it and I'd like to continue to make my one thing to really produce great YouTube content that is valuable to anyone interested in data science or sports analytics. You know, I learned so much in 2019, largely due to this reading, and I'm glad I got to share it uh, to you all through this medium. Hopefully you'll take a look at some of these books and they will as, be as valuable to you as they were to me. I will say, so if you buy through any of the links in the description, those are affiliate links. Uh, they are at no extra cost to you, but they do give me, you know, a, just a small percentage of any of the books sold. I use all that money to reinvest in the channel, whether it's buying better camera equipment, um, paying for courses that I plan to review, or giving away books, things like that, um, in my videos in general. Uh, they also will eventually go to paying off some of my student loans, hopefully. So I really appreciate you guys watching and potentially buying through those links. Now, good luck in 2020. I hope you read a lot. I hope you learn a lot. I hope you grow a lot. And good luck on your data science journey.